Hi, this is Alan, the developer of the HASP-1 device, part of the HA Switchplate line of open-source touchscreen home automation controllers. In a previous video, we went through the first-time setup of a new HASP-1 device and got that communicating with our Home Assistant environment by way of deploying the core functionality blueprint. In this video, I want to dig a little deeper into that core functionality blueprint so we can understand what that's doing for us. I'm looking at the basic web UI here in Home Assistant. From there, I can go from configuration, automations, and find the core functionality blueprint. We'll edit that and take a look at what this thing does for us today. Here we have a basic description of just what the HASP core functionality blueprint is doing, a screenshot of what that looks like. And then we have a section here of the page and button reference. If we click on the details, what we'll get is a breakdown of each of the pages that are available to us in the HASP1 project. Here we'll see pages one through three. They're all the same, so we just show one of them. Similarly in pages four through five and six through 11. You'll note at the bottom of every page, you will see the same arrangement of three buttons, buttons one, two, and three. Then for each different layout, there's different buttons or maybe sliders available to you. And you can pick and choose for your blueprints as you're deploying them, which of these buttons on which of these pages you want to utilize. In the previous video, we deployed a clock blueprint, which shows us you know, a nice large font and we put it on page one, button four. That made sense because a clock is something that might want large text that we can see from across the room. And if we were to squeeze that into a tiny little button like this, we probably wouldn't be able to read it. So something like a clock or something that you want to see from a distance away would make sense in a larger button. But you might have different use cases and different things you want to do. An example might be an alarm control system. And for an alarm, you have the code entry through a 10 key keypad. And so you're just going to need more than four buttons. So for that, something like page seven might make sense. Maybe you're deploying some dimmers and you want the slider functions that you find on page four or five. Page eight might be good for a media controller where you have some large buttons that can display things like a track name or an artist name. And then you have a slider which you can use to control volume. So for each of your blueprints as you deploy them, you will need to target them to a page and then a button on that page. As we scroll down here, we have a series of options that are available to us around those pages that we select. The very first option is the HASP device that this automation is controlling. In our environment, we only have one, and so we've selected that one. But for example, in my home, I have seven of these deployed. And so I have seven automations deployed from the core functionality blueprint, each selecting one of those seven HASP devices. Scrolling down this list, the very first thing we'll run into are the page select buttons one, two, and three. We have options for the text that's displayed, the font that's used for that text display, and then which page each one of those three buttons selects. So right now we've just said one, two, and three. Those target pages one, two, and three. As we saw in the map above, those pages are identical. And so if I click on two and three, we'll just see that same layout it's flipping us between each of those three pages. This is great. We can change that if we want. So maybe page one, I don't want it to say page one. I want it to say status. And that's going to show me things like a calendar or a clock or maybe the weather. And I'm going to leave that on page one because we already have a clock here showing us the time of day. Page button two, I'm going to change to say, I don't know, maybe an alarm control panel. What we saw at page seven might be suitable for that. And then page three, maybe I want that to be, I don't know, how about some of the dimmers that we saw over on page one and four. And so I'll go ahead and say that. And we got one, seven, and four selected. I'll click save. I'm gonna scroll all the way up to the top and click run actions. We'll need to do this each time we need to make a change here. So we'll save and run actions. And when we do that, we'll see these buttons update. And then the HASP1 device reboots. Now it's doing that because there are some changes which need to be made to the device when we first roll this blueprint out. And part of those require a restart, but we only need to do that once. And so if we look all the way at the bottom of this, you'll see the, the last option is the first time has to set up a reset and it's turned on. If we turn that off, save and run actions, 
any changes that we've made will be pushed out to the device, but it won't have to reboot anymore. And so that's just a quick hit once you've deployed this thing once and once you've executed it once, you no longer need to go through this first time setup. So just go ahead and turn that off. And you know, the changes that you make will run a little bit faster because we don't need to reboot. And once we've done that, we'll see now we've got the three page select buttons showing us the label that we told them to apply and they're flipping to the page that we assigned. This is great. This gives us a quick direct access to one of the three pages out of a total of 11. However, you may want more than three pages available to you depending on your individual use case. So we have another option. Instead of directly accessing the individual pages, we can set those buttons up to scroll up and down through those list of pages. So I'm going to turn the scroll function on and then I wanna change the labels for buttons one and three. Again, this is one and this is three over here. And instead of saying status, what I'm gonna do is put a left arrow, that's just, you know, the is less than symbol. And similarly for the label in page button three, that's that right hand one, I'm going to have a greater than, kind of an arrow pointed to the right. This will make sense here when I say save, run actions. And now we see instead of directly accessing a page, what we're doing is scrolling through all of the 11 available pages. Once we get to page 11, we go back to page one. Okay, great. Now we have a way that a user can, standing in front of this plate, get at all 11 pages. However, it's probably unlikely that you are really going to use all 11 pages. And so if you have more than three pages, but less than 11, the page scroll list allows us to define which of those pages we're interested in and we've configured for the user to access. So here I could do something like one, four, eight, and nine, just as an example. If I say save, run actions, now as I scroll through this list, we'll have one, four, eight, nine, and then it cycles back to the beginning. So that allows us to pare down the entire list of pages so we only will scroll through those which we're actually got configured and we really want to use. This list does not need to be in order. If I want it to go one, eight, nine, four, and then cycle back to one, we just change the order of the pages here in that list. We'll say run actions. And now our new page order is sent to the plate. All right, with that in place, we're now also seeing that the page button two, this middle button here, just tells us the number of the page that we're on. We can change that as well. So here we have where it says page one, I can make that say status. Maybe page eight, I have media controls. Page nine, maybe that's my HVAC controls. Page four, I could put some light dimmers, maybe something like that. I'll click save, I'll go back to run actions. Now that label that we've just defined will appear at the bottom of each of these pages. Finally, as we've been clicking run actions, probably didn't notice it, but there's been a notifications that's popping up each time. If we click that notifications here, I can go and select all the YAML code that's being displayed to me. I'll copy that, dismiss, and then go back to my main Lovelace UI here. I'll say edit dashboard. I'm gonna add a card, go all the way down to manual, and then paste in that code that we just copied. I'll say save, and what we'll find is a card full of maybe some useful information about our plate. What page we're on, we can control what page is currently selected through this. We can adjust the backlight if we want. None of these are required. You will, you can adjust or create these devices in other panels if you want. It's just a quick way to access some basic functionality that you'll be commonly using with the NJ Switch Play. So I'll go back to this. Now, every time I click Run Actions, it's going to keep throwing up that notification here. So I'm gonna turn that off and now 
I will no longer be getting the notification with YAML because I've already made use of it. And that's it. That's the core functionality of the Blueprint. This allows you to change pages on your Hass device and change the page labels that appear on the buttons on the bottom of the screen. Thanks for your time today. Catch you in the next video.